welcome to our video. Uh, the purpose of this video is to help you, uh, the prospective participants and app applicants to the Senior Executive Fellows, to understand uh, what is a virtual offering for the Senior Executive Fellows and make sure that you understand fully what our plan is and um, that it's something that you will uh, match with your schedule, with what you're trying to learn and what you're trying to develop as part of your professional development. I have with me, uh, my name is Taurus Ling, first of all, I'm the uh, Director of the Senior Executive Fellows and I have with me Dana Bourne, who is our Faculty Chair. We've been working together for eight years now, both virtually and uh, in person on campus. So we're just going to ask a few of the questions here and we're going to go back and forth and discuss kind of uh, what we think your questions might be. So the first question I have for you, Dana, is how is the curriculum for the online Senior Executive Fellows Program different from the on-campus offering? That's a great question. And Horace, it's always great to be with you, whether it's in class or virtually. And to our prospective participants, we hope to see you in class, either in person or virtually. Uh, we are devoted to your development, and I hope you'll sense that in our answers to what we think are your questions. All right, so the difference between the on-campus and the virtual environment is, uh, let me first say, what's the same? Our expected goals for the program aligned with the executive core qualifications and beyond uh, for our US and our global participants is the same. How we go about it is different. So you can expect that in a virtual environment, we're going to have fewer live sessions where everybody's on at the exact same time and slightly shorter sessions because our uh, attention span when we're on a virtual platform is a little bit less, although we do make it very engaging nonetheless. Uh, but we'll have more asynchronous, which means there's more uh, do it as you have time in preparation for the next day opportunities. But I will say that our, our outcomes are the same. The how we go about it is adapted for the platform that we're on. Okay, great. Uh, are the faculty the same for the online and the uh, on-campus programs? Yes, for the most part, the faculty are the same. This is a four week program, whether it's done in person or virtually. And the, the, the nice thing about that is it, I think it's the only program we have at the Harvard Kennedy School we offer where there's access to up to 30 faculty over the course of that four weeks. Now, I think it's you, Horace, that pointed out to me that even in our degree students, and you're one of our alums, having done the program at the Kennedy School, that you don't have access to that many faculty, even in a, a year or two year program. So we're very uh, blessed to have the commitment of our faculty, whether it's in person or in a virtual environment. Yeah, and, and also to point out that uh, no two sessions of SEF are the same. Our faculty switch, you know, we have a, a few that are traveling or just not available due to teaching um, and other appointments. Uh, so there's always a little bit of a change, but the online and the on-campus programs, there's not a difference in terms of how that works out. Most of the faculty are, are the same in both of those programs. Um, how's the feedback been uh, on these online programs compared to perhaps the uh, on-campus programs? Yeah, the feedback for both the in-person and the online have been really strong. And we read all of that, we look at all of that, but we've been um, very pleased such that we started to, as you well know, look into measuring some specific outcomes and trying to find out is the difference that we're trying to co-create together with participants really moving the needle and making that difference. And we have through research uh, found out that uh, we are making a significant difference uh, in both the online as well as the in-person. In fact, uh, that difference is not differentiated whether someone does the program online or in person. So that's pretty strong validation, both the, uh, the participant ratings of the program in both, but also uh, our evidence that shows that we are making some difference in areas that we're being very intentional about, uh, like self-awareness and uh, like stress and well-being and like uh, a clarity of uh, self and purpose in life. Right, and we've, we've offered this online uh, version of the program seven times. 
So it's not like we only did a couple and we're not sure how it is. We have a pretty good, we have hundreds and hundreds of people who have gone through the program and given us this feedback. Um, what do you think about that data? How's that? Yes, and I think one of the phrases I, we've used and I think we've heard from participants who are now, uh, who have completed the Senior Executive Fellows Program in, in multiple ways, but it's that we've created an on-campus environment, even in a virtual environment such that, and, and, and Horace, you do this so beautifully well of uh, giving you know, lessons on Harvard, such that even our virtual participants are able to give a tour of the Harvard campus, uh, no matter you know, where they're doing the program from. Uh, I love the diversity uh, in our online. We're able to bring into the classroom environment people who may not have an opportunity uh, to travel uh, because of visa issues or because of you know, work-life integration issues. And it's really incredible to be able to have that uh, tapestry of different uh, sectors as well as different agencies and countries in one you know, platform and an opportunity to learn together. Yeah, that gets to the question about maybe there's some advantages to the online program that are uh, over what you can offer on campus. Um, in particular, uh, everybody has a front row seat, right, Dana? <laughs> That's true. The same size square, wherever you're joining in from, uh, we have tried to create what, well, we tried to create fun as well as learning. Learning should be fun. So we've done a, a 5K uh, walk slash run around the world. We've done Jeopardy uh, based on some of the material we're learning. We've created affinity opportunities to talk with people about issues of interest. Uh, it, it's actually been amazing what we've been able to do to create that type of community and to build the competency and to kind of regain the commitment to making a, a public difference uh, around the globe on this platform. Uh, it's also, I mean, this is not trivial, but it's half the tuition because we don't have the cost associated with meals and hotel and transportation and things. So many organizations has looked at this as an opportunity to get two for the price of one, so to speak. So we, we are in a fortunate position now where we can We've learned how to offer a virtual opportunity twice a year, as well as an on-campus opportunity twice a year for whichever works best for you as, as participants. Mm -hmm. Just a quick correction. It's not half the price, but it is significantly lower than the, than the program yeah. tuition. Yeah. We can edit and, that uh, out, or we could just add, you know, it's not trivial that right. the tuition is less because we don't have all the costs associated with food and transportation and hotel for the virtual uh, opportunity. Sure. And um, to get back to the advantages, um, we did talk about the fact that everybody gets a front row seat, not to knock the on-campus uh, uh, experience, but when you're on campus, uh, about half the class is about, you know, 20, 30 feet away from the faculty because we have this set in, in rows and um, in this particular environment, everybody gets to see the faculty face to face. And I think that's really what we would think of as the secret sauce to the program and why people rated our online programs highly is because our faculty really care about uh, your success whether you're online or in person. I mean, they realize that you have real jobs, that you have uh, or an impact in the fields that you're working in, whether it's agriculture, defense, uh, homeland security, um, you know, financial aspects, whatever. Uh, and the faculty really care about that. And it really comes across in these, um, through this medium because you're only a few feet away. And um, many of our faculty office, uh, offer office hours, so you can meet with them one-on-one. -on -one. Dana does that. Um, Frank Hartman does that as well, and, and some of the other faculty. So it's not, it's, you get, you can get one-on-one -on -one time with them. And then when you're asking a question, you really are one-on-one -on -one and everyone's listening in on your conversation. Um, and our faculty in class or online um, will spend some time talking about material, but also a good chunk of the time I'll be asking for your questions and what's important to you. And so by this medium, whether it's online or in person, 
you have that opportunity to shape the conversation by asking the questions and you get, in a sense, one-on-one -on -one time with each of our faculty by asking questions. And um, there's, there's lots of opportunities for that. And we have discussion times, right? With the online sessions, Dana, can you tell us a little bit more about discussion times? Yes, there are, uh, the schedule is, is made up to where you do have an opportunity in a virtual environment to have many different levels of learning. That's kind of similar to our on-campus where there's the individual level of learning and that's your own preparation and, and you're uh, doing the readings and, and reading the cases and you also have an opportunity for interpersonal where you have a paired mentorship with another uh, participant. You can also have a mentor that is aligned with somebody who is a uh, who has completed the senior executive fellows program, who has gone on to senior executive level, if you choose to have that experience, you can engage one-on-one, -on -one, as Horace just mentioned, with faculty who offer office hours, even in a virtual environment, to meet with you one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. There's also your study group, where you will be paired in a study group. You meet every day with four or five other people, and you talk about what you get out of or questions you have remaining of the material before you come into what is the next level of learning and that's the big class environment. And then we have another level of learning, which is we invite for every program, several sessions for our alums to come back into the conversation with us. And so we have a big room, which is the total cohort. And then we have a bigger room, which includes our, our, our fellows who are uh, alums as well. It makes for a very dynamic learning environment where we're constantly uh, co-creating, you know, our understanding of how to approach a very um, fast moving, complex, volatile, ambiguous world together with uh, similar language about frameworks and how we can have agency to be part of, as Horace just pointed out, something of consequence, which each and every one of you are. Great. Um, so this is the big money question, which is how can somebody never set foot on the Harvard campus and yet Claim that they have completed a Harvard program. Dana, what do you say to that? Well, I'll quote several of the comments that we have from participants who have done the virtual program who said, now I understand why Harvard is Harvard. And that's not something that is a hubris statement. It's really one about humility. You know, the H on our chest is how have we created that opportunity to where each participant recognizes that they have been through what is a challenging uh, yet um, hopefully uh, a rewarding experience together with others that there is that claim that I am a Harvard you know, uh, participant who has completed the very challenging senior executive fellows program. And, and so in the words of our participants, I'll just say it, it, there is no difference between you know, the Harvard shirt that you buy, be, whether you've been in person or that you buy that and have it delivered to Zimbabwe, <laughs> uh, you're still a Harvard uh, senior executive fellow alum. And, and we do hope that people will return to campus at some point uh, to participate in some of our alumni events uh, to top up their experience they had virtually with actually you know, feet on the ground in a sense that you know, they're, they're, they're connected both in terms of their learning, but also in terms of the proximity of you know, being on campus as well. Right. Um... I'd like to add on to that with a few things. Number one, the certificate that you get at the completion of the program and in all our databases that you will get into for uh, mailing of our, uh, or our monthly newsletters and do not distinguish between an online participant or one who's on campus. So from all aspects, no one even knows whether you're online or uh, on campus. Um, second of all, um, one of the things that we really emphasize is you are responsible for your learning. You know, we create as, as good an environment we can on campus or online, but it's, it's you who decide how much you're going to learn, how much effort you're going to put into the program. Um, you could have an on-campus participant who doesn't put much effort in and doesn't get much out of the program. It's, it's how much effort you put into it. And I've, I've seen that the people that come online, uh, your classmates potentially, um, are extremely dedicated, extremely focused. Uh, we have participants, believe it or not, who join our program in um, 
from New Zealand, from the Philippines, from Australia, from Hong Kong, from China, different places like that. And so for our live sessions, which for us here in the United States and the Eastern time zone are at from like nine o'clock um, all the way through till 3.30, for them, this is early morning. <laughs> this is 3.30 in the morning or early, even earlier or later um, in their time zones. And we've seen these participants online actively asking questions, actively participating, even though it's early morning in their time zone. And on the other side of things, we have people in Hawaii, for example, who join us um, at, at five in the morning their time. So we've seen people on both ends, uh, but again, very dedicated and participating no matter what time zone they are in. So um, just to run through kind of how the schedule would go, um, we usually have uh, early morning workout. Um, this is kind of optional for those who are interested. We do some catalysthetics together. Uh, we usually have, I don't know, five, 10 people who join us um, and, and do that. And then uh, to answer the question of how do you know, you know, how can you say you've attended a Harvard program? Uh, after a quick shower, I usually go through the secrets of Harvard. So we talked about all those things that you would actually more than what you would know if you came here on, uh, on campus. But we talk about the art museums, we talk about um, the traditions of Harvard, the students here, the environment here, and all the properties that Harvard has all over the world, lots of interesting things. So we spend about 15 minutes every morning, and it's optional again for those people who want to do that. Then we have our study groups, which is the same as, as what we have here if you're on campus, which is your five or six uh, people that talked about uh, different things. So you did talk about the different um, uh, cases. Uh, the study questions that faculty have, and um, these study groups are like the highlight of many people's uh, experiences. We mix them up so people are very different in the study groups from different parts of the world, from different agencies, from different perspectives, so you get uh, input. And also the leadership challenges um, are the same, uh, this, the, the challenges that people bring. Can you talk a little bit about the leadership challenges, Dana, and how the program helps people with those? Sure. Uh, the leadership challenge is actually something we request, uh, whether it's an in-person participant or a virtual participant. And it's really you presenting to us, what is one of the challenges that you are facing right now? What's a significant hurdle uh, that is ahead of you? And what it does is give, one, it gives us a sense of what are some of the challenges facing uh, people who are senior executive fellows, and that tends to be sometimes thematic, uh, depending on when you're, you know, at that GS 14, 15 senior executive service level. Uh, but the other is it gives you a, a real problem or challenge that is scaffolding for you to help make sense of, as, as one of our faculty uses the word, to make it sticky for you as you're learning some of the frameworks and wrestling with some of the uh, discussion that we're having. It gives you a way to think about that for your own personal professional challenge. Uh, we will also be spending time in the program that has your study group uh, consulting and helping you with your challenge, applying some of their own experiences, their own learnings, the, the common language you're now having to address your particular leadership challenge. So our hope is that one, it makes the material more sticky for you, but also that you are completing the program having made some great advancement in your approach to that challenge to be able to be effective and influential as you uh, return to your office and, and trying to resolve that challenge effectively. Great. Um, so whether you are planning to come in person or online, um, our faculty and our team here is fully dedicated to trying to help you develop your leadership skills, abilities, knowledge, perspectives, those frameworks uh, to help you deal with different situations. Uh, remember that if you come to Harvard, you're not going to get answers here. You're just going to have questions and ways to look at how to address those questions. So, um, Dana, do you have any last words before we kind of close this up? I just, uh, I, I'm just so grateful to to work with you, Horace, and the team. That uh, you know, I I will say that the ratings for our staff support for our online programs uh, is like a four. 
9.93 to 9.7 out of five. So you really amp up, which is required when we're doing a virtual program. It takes a little bit more to create that environment, but you do that so very, very well. And our participants rise to the challenge as well. And if this is addressing, uh, for those of you on the fence, if you're uh, thinking about a virtual or in-person, so much of it is, is you picking what works best for you in your current environment. And we just assure you that uh, you will work together uh, to help it be a very impactful experience for you personally and professionally. So uh, we hope that uh, we see you either uh, um, in person or an on-campus or in our on-campus virtual environment. And uh, we wish you well and thank you for your dedicated service. Yes, definitely. Thank you for your work in the real world. Um, just a couple other notes is that you can sense the energy that Dana has and that I have and our faculty will have as we uh, work with you online. But we also do the same types of activities um, in terms of class activities. We have simulations, we have negotiations, and you'll be doing all of that online with your classmates. And I have to tell you that your classmates and you are so creative. Some of the, um, you have met uh, in person in other locations in DC or some other places for a beer or for some meals uh, on your own. And uh, your groups have continued to meet after the programs have been over. Uh, we do offer you, uh, you know, in terms of what you walk away from the program, we offer you uh, live uh, consultations with our research librarians, opportunities for students to come work in your organization for free as interns or we're doing policy analysis. Uh, so you have all those same benefits as people that come here on, in person. And I hope we've highlighted a few things also about what's even better online. And one of the funny things is that Dana mentioned, we do these runs and also some other exercises. So you actually get to be in these different places. We've had people running by the Eiffel Tower in Hawaii, in Florida, and you can see people's uh, home environments, which you can't if you um, uh, come here on campus. So um, thank you for spending the time to listen to us and to engage us. If you have additional questions, uh, you'll see my uh, phone number and my email um, in this, on this webpage. And um, we look forward to working with you, helping you develop and grow to reach your potential, whether it's online or on campus. Thank you for your time. Look forward to seeing you online or in person. Take care.